is coming from God. Where one step, two steps, three steps, where three steps. Discovering and passing God on. While we still on land, we try to get up really speed. Soon we, we touch the water, we try to get it like a sea machine. It's not a good straight into the water, you know.
And what we are trying to get the kids to do, if you listen just to some of the important catchphrases, you know, the journey, it's the trying something new. So many of the expo themes across history and to where we are now were just ideas that came out. No one really thought it could happen. And there are some ideas that came about that didn't happen. And to get our students to understand that that's okay. It's okay to make that mistake. It's okay to put yourself out there. Because we are not looking for a typical maths book of everyone getting a right tick. We're looking for the book where there is the person who's got something wrong and willing to try. But we thought by showing a video that really had nothing to do with school, to get them to think. And I played this at the beginning of the week and I let a whole week go by at school. Kids were literally, and I'm not over dramatizing this at all, although I feel like I could be a person that does that. And what well, this character in the passages, I'm going to try it at home. I'm going to let you know at the end of this little presentation what the outcome was. But the whole idea that we tried to get with the students was, would there be something like that that's possible? And look at the name, Liquid Mountaineering. You know, they were, what did that all entail? It got the kids thinking. And then I had people coming back to me without me even saying anything. Oh, man, did you know that Gustav Eiffel's Eiffel Tower wasn't really impressive when he got to go for it at the... So now already people were going home and doing research that none of us had asked them to go and do. But it sparked a thought. And I'm going to leave it just right there with you now and go on to the next one. Because we will get back to this. So one of the things that we're trying to have a look at is Sorry. ensure that the just word inquirer is so very ID for us to be lifelong learners. And I think Again, no matter what program you work with, that's the type of information you're trying to work with. Um, we were very fortunate enough to get our hands on a copy, and I said hint, hint here, because so I'm hoping to get some more. Expo Explorers, written by Siemens. And one of our units of inquiry for our grade threes is Explorers. We've always had that as a unit of inquiry, where the kids are learning a little bit about history, the following your diets, the sort of Columbus, what were explorers? What challenges did they face? What, what were their questions? And we thought, how brilliant. And for our staff, we tried to encourage that every unit of inquiry is to try and make a link with something here in the UAE and Expo 2020. So then tuning in was, hey, Expo Explorers, what's the Expo? Let's go and explore the Expo site on, on website. What questions do we have? And but what challenges do we think Dubai might face? You can hear by the accent being a South African. One of the challenges I used as an example for the students was when we hosted the World Cup soccer. We didn't think it was ever going to be hosted because we didn't think our stadiums would be ready. But all the ideas and all the challenges and all the things that we had to think of, what could you get through this? Risk taker is another word that we like to use with our students. What are you willing to try? Who was a risk taker in history? So now we're beginning to make links of work that they are actually doing in class. One of the things Sam brought in was to be inquirers, and I think you might have seen it. He had an alien spaceship landing at our school. And the kids rocked up the next morning and there was the spaceship that was crashed and the art teacher had made a little smoke coming out. Just the interesting questions from our little pre-Ks all the way up to the rest of the students in the primary school came around asking questions. We had sent messages to the parents beforehand to say, just a heads up, this is what's happening, aliens haven't really landed here in, in the UAE. But here are some possible prompt questions you could help to not just say, what is it? What is it doing here? Why do you think? Where do you think it came from? Why would it land here, etc.? And it was an absolute awesome morning of seeing parents coming specifically for um, drop-off and hanging around us and asking the questions. The teachers took the kids out and said, what do you think? Our, year, our grade fives did a newspaper article based on this because that was linked to their text site that they were doing in class. We then had them doing some maths linked to this. We had narrative, descriptive writing that came, obviously a good old traditional adjectives lesson that came in, but 
you could build this all around. And I think it's so important for us to realize that, yeah, you have the UAE and a great opportunity with Expo 2020 to use that and how you can bring that into your learning and teaching each day. So within our contacts, we are continuing to find as well as those opportunities for our learners. We want them to take risks. We always, as much as we can, give them worksheets for those questions 1 to 20, and there's a method that they just follow. We really want them to engage. We use technology as much as we can within our learning and make sure we have a balance between traditional skills and the use of technology. Our children can see their led parent workshop on the use of Seesaw app. We're constantly pushing them out of their comfort zones and we really want them to take risks and challenge themselves in all that they do. Okay, some of you may have seen this clip already. This is from the Expo 2020 website. Please make sure you <coughs> this report.
phonics training, mm -hmm. and it's a really wonderful activity, really, I think this group hit the nail on the head, really. Everyone goes into it equal, so there's no prior knowledge required, it's not the right or the wrong, and I've seen children that traditionally are a little bit quieter, a little bit more reluctant to get involved, really shine in, in diamond seminar activities. And I think the interesting part, just having a look as to who's had what as their number one, from equality to perseverance, to cooperation, and I think respect being every group sitting here has practically got a different one to start off with. And as Sam is saying, the key thing is just being able to get that communication with the kids. Our teachers used this in the beginning of the year for essential agreements, setting up class rules. And I'm sure you would have noticed moral education core values, those are the words. If you're at an IB school, it was our learner profiles as well that we then had our students make the learner profile words, which are similar to the ones that are the core values. And that's pretty much, I think, a great opportunity for students. With this activity, we would also be sharing with them. So if you are going to be coming, you, you've won the right to come and present at the Expo 2020. What type of attributes should you have? Who, who would you want in your team? And what way should they be thinking? And what the type of approach that they would go through? If we look at the next part, Sustainability. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because I think we've actually got some very nice chats happening in the other rooms about sustainability. But what we were trying to get through to our students is that sustainability, when you hear the word, is not just being eco-friendly. Sustainability, what does that word mean? And one of the advantages of us being a new school is telling the kids, what are you putting in place now? That will be in 10 years time when other students start. You have the right, it's almost, you've almost taken the word legacy. What legacy are you leaving that's going to continue to be sustained in the years to come at our new campus? Um, yeah, I think the young gentleman over there is, is very eager um, <laughs> with, with, with his presentation. And then right at the very end, people, the video that you were watching, <coughs> mountaineering, I'll just give you a quick bit. They actually built a bridge under the water to make it look as if they were walking on water. And it was all about high tech, trying to sell their new water repellent shoes. But you only saw high tech feature once when the gentleman was sitting at the car, putting on shoes, and he didn't even mention the name high tech. And this went after a week of showing, having the kids talk through and then showing them this, that but it can't be. There has to be other things to it. No, I've tried it, I can walk a few steps. <laughs> it was a very interesting discussion in the fact that they then came, oh, but it looked real because they sounded confident. They were using words that I can relate to because I do have repellent shoes. So you're taking part of info and you're assuming the rest. It led to very interesting conversations. Mythbusters, I'm sure you've all used that in your classroom at some point as well. They debunked the whole theory. And um, I then had students that actually started coming up with that. They went and did a little bit of research and said, oh no, they used an Olympic runner and not even he could make it across the water. <coughs> he was also wearing water repellent and he couldn't do it. And then the whole sum it up was sometimes things will work and sometimes they won't. How can you go around about it in a way, I know it sounds confusing, but as the kid, I would say a kid best said it, either you've got to be super confident as Candice in what you're saying, even if you don't know what you're saying, or B, at least be willing to try it and see if it would work. And who knows, maybe in a year or two or in 10 years, someone might just be able to come up with something that would lead to that for us to really do liquid mountaineering. But for a week, it created a buzz of many questions our school. And that's pretty much it as we as we come. Um, there is a what work session feedback. Yeah. So guys I'd just like you to get out the devices and go onto that website and give these guys some feedback on the presentation. That'd be great because we're running a little bit on time to buy so if you could get that sorted out. Thank you. We do have for you um, should you wish the presentation, we've got a QR code so you have access to the presentation as well. Should you wish to, to make use of it, you 
mind just even just one video <laughs> of liquid mountaineering to show your students in class. Do you have any questions? How's David doing? Yeah, yeah. I've been here a couple of years here. We were both soft and coordinators, so. Then you're welcome to keep the words if you wanted to. There we go.